All right, back for part two. What happened to Mark? Who are you? Uh, Mark, I was interviewing Mark White. Now, who are you? Yo, Mark had to go. He meeting some guy. He got some new cues and this bloke wants to buy a BK Rush, a 314 and an Air Rush for jumping. It's party time here, cocktails, cash, music pumping. So you're stuck with me till he gets the deal done. You asked me some questions in it. Let's have some fun. <laughs> you're quite the rapper. You're quite the rapper. I don't think I've ever seen you on MTV. Uh, what 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 name do you go by here, Mr. Rapper Dude? Yo, I is two piece Q in it in the house. Oh, and you do say in it. How about that? A British, a white British rapper, uh, that uh spits rhymes about billiards. Uh, you are world famous. Have uh, I actually know who you are? I I follow you on social media, two piece. Uh, well, well, explain the music part of, of your billiards. Uh, uh, what's the story with you and and are you a pool player, two piece? Like, are you any good? Can I beat you? I got a Fargo of two one two. <laughs> I ain't no good, but I'm two piece Q. <laughs> <laughs> But I started some doing some rappy birthday things, you know, and people now send me message and say, I want you to write a song for my birthday, innit? Uh, I hope you're getting paid for that. I'll 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 give you four dollars if you give me uh if you get if you give me a song. For, uh, four dollars, I think. Four dollars per I word. Four dollars per word, man. <laughs> Can I have Mark back, please? Can we get Mark back? Unless you have any more songs, two piece, that's it. All right, let's get Mark back. I've got no more songs at four dollars a, a time. No, sorry about that. <laughs> that's you, you, your hip hop I'm stuck. persona. I'm stuck. I'll leave it on. Leave it on. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Your hip hop persona is uh, is very funny. I like when you put those videos out, uh, and and it shows. I think the biggest thing is, is it shows that you like to have fun right it's it's about having fun it's enjoying life let's talk about your life because you have a magical life we in part part one we talked about puerto rico and some of the events uh that you attended in 2022 2023 is uh, a few short days away and i'm going to guess you have a big schedule planned uh how many events are you signed up for? What are the events? What are you looking forward to? Let's talk about what's going on in your life in 2023. Yeah, well, I'm lucky to get home for just a few weeks, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go and see my daughter. She's had a grandchild. I mean, I am, you know, I'm, I'm, a, regular, I'm a regular guy. I'm just a regular guy who's just doing what I love. But I've also got other things in my life that I love, obviously. So I'm gonna get to spend some time with my daughter Ellie and my little new grandson Albie. Hi Albie, he's a real cracker. And uh, her uh, boyfriend Jack, hi guys. I uh, hope you're doing well, I'm gonna just come and see you soon. Is this uh, your first baby or you have other grandbabies? No, I'm my first, my first grandchild. Congratulations. Uh, he, he was born while I was in uh, Austria actually. And I was lucky because I got home for uh, a few days to see him when he was about three weeks old so that was really really nice but yeah it's back to normal after Christmas I'm going to uh, as we've already said Atlantic City for the new women's world nine ball tournament sponsored by Predator now uh, Kelly Fisher reigning champion of course who else and uh, she'll be looking to defend that at Harris where they have the US Open in uh, Atlantic City so I'm headed there Hell, I've been there many, many times. As you know, uh, I live, you know, only a few few hours away from Atlantic City. Uh, I hope to be there at least one day. That's my plan. So I look forward to seeing you, and we'll catch up in person. Uh, and maybe you'll let me take your picture again. I've gotten a lot better with photography. Uh, I haven't shown you anything new, but I've gotten a lot better with my camera since since then. And I have a new camera since uh, since oh, I. Picture so the quality of my photos are significantly better. I'm not coming to shoot the event, but I bring my camera everywhere. 
so I'm, I'll try and shoot some stuff. Uh, I'm doing more to, to, to cheer on, cheer on. Christine is going to be there and, and, and I like supporting her and, and obviously all, all the females, right. All the, all the pros, not, not just Christina not just Kelly, but just everyone. I'm, as you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan. So, so Harris is coming up the predator event. And then what, what do you have after that? Then, uh, new date for Vegas this year. I believe it's the 24th. All the, the event calendar will be posted sometime before Christmas, the first six months anyway. And then in the new year, they will, Predator will announce the the final, the, uh, the second half of the season. So already confirmed he's going to be Vegas. Uh, the the, the hold, on, before, hold on. Before we get to Vegas, do you plan on going to Derby this year, even in the capacity of just going to watch? Do you know, I wanted to. I love that event. I went there last year. It's one of them big ones that you have to do. You know, I've already done Moscone. I've done the International where we went, of course, in uh, Virginia, in Norfolk. Um, I've done Moscone as well last year. So I really have done all the big events. I, I really wanted to go to it, but the hotel was fully booked. And as you know, that venue... For the Derby City, if you're not in that hotel, you might as well not yeah. be there. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it's just ridiculous. It's uh, yeah, reminds me of a story actually. Do you remember the taxi we got, the Uber we got to the Sheraton? We were a similar situation, we were staying away from the, the venue, weren't we? And that yeah. woman turned up absolutely stunk of weed. She had fingernails that were on the wheel, but on the wheel, oh, fingernails at the same were time. Yeah, if nails are on the windscreen. <laughs> we spent more time lost, uh, you know, than than actually the ride should have been. And she was uh, terrible, wasn't she? Yeah, and some reason you got mad at me. I didn't pick her, but it's all right. It's all right. Well, that was a fun trip, right? Uh, oh, it was great. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to go back through your schedule, but you mentioned international. Uh, I'm going to international this year. I hope you go with me. Uh, I hope you have time. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's, you know, just just in the fan section, you know, uh, no, no work planned or anything, but that's my, one of my favorite events. Derby, I know what you mean by Derby. If, if you've never been to Derby for, for you guys uh, watching at home, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable event. It's, there's thousands of pool players. There's always something going on. Going on. Uh, the cash action room, you know, it's got a sign that says no gambling. You go in there and everybody's gambling. Uh, and then there's uh, just, you know, and the, and the one thing that's cool about Derby, uh, if you've never been there, you probably don't know this. It's cheaper to be a player to get in. Uh, they do this on purpose and it's smart. It's cheaper to to pay your entry fee to be a player than it is to be a fan. So they want everybody to be a player. Um, and, and that's a, a tournament that literally – you could have started playing last week and be in that event. You know, they'll take anyone. There's thousands of players. There's different events going on at, at every moment of the day. Uh, the action room is going 24 hours a day. You're on site. And like what Mark had mentioned, if you are not on site, you're not anywhere near the tournament place. No. There's it's, it's, it's a casino. I think it's an Indian casino, if I remember correctly, yeah, yeah. on the river. And it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so if you're not staying at that hotel, you're miles away at the next hotel. So you, you definitely have to stay there. Uh, I have some good derby stories from 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 the last time I was there. Not not appropriate for for this, but one day I'll tell you that. I, I probably already told you because it's good stories. So all right, so all right, so let's go back to your schedule. So Harris Atlantic City for the Predators event. Uh, the Predator event, and then what? And yeah, then what? Uh, where where will we find you next? Well, the it's it's actually the Kamui Nine Ball Women's World Championship, but there's also oh. there's also a a league event, a state championships going on there also with CSI. So they'll be there with the BCA League and the USA Pool Leagues there as well. So we won't just have the the tables for the Women's World Championship. We'll have the probably fifty, maybe more, uh, seven foot bar box predator tables as well for uh, the the league events and then when that is I, I mean they're crazily making tables at the moment in Spain uh, for for predator for the 
for the Vegas event because we, as you know, the Vegas event, we need over 300 bar box tables. It's just a crazy, crazy event and lots of, you know, there's so much going on there this year. We've got the Carum, uh, I think it's the UBC Championships going on again on the Predator Carum table. We've got the the World Temple, uh, Wojtek Shevchik is the, the reigning champion of that, of course. We've got the the Las Vegas Open, the Las Vegas Women's Tournament, plus all the all the booths around fifty odd booths or you know something like that. Crazy event, I'm sure you've been there. It really is a fabulous. It, it's called the greatest billiard show on earth, you know, and, and it really is. It's a real. I call it a real feast on the felt. You know, there's just everything that any pool nut could want in one hotel at the Rio. That is from the twenty fourth. Yeah, the Rio Pool Hotel. Uh, yeah, just any pool in Vegas is good pool, right? And uh, you have Griff's right around the corner, which is a is a fun room. Uh, but there's a lot of good pool rooms, not just Griff's in Vegas. I'm sure you've been to more than one. Uh, any other events that we should know about that, that's on the schedule? That, or is uh, that yeah, there, there's a there's a new one been added. I haven't got the dates for it just yet. That's the one that will be announced in the in the new year. But it's um, it is confirmed for. Croatia, a new one, a pro billiard series, men and women. So that's the t the ten ball, two races to four. Um, there's is a there is well, there has been some chat and talk and rumours about them changing the format slightly. Um, I don't know whether they have yet or not. I, that's the truth. I don't know. They're keeping it very very secret. But that will be coming out in the new year also. Um, and we're adding. We had the the World 8 Ball, Predator World 8 Ball at Puerto Rico this year. Next year, that will be moving to Japan, and that will be the Kamui World 8 Ball Championship. Reigning champion will be the man of the moment, of course, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. He will be there to defend his title just outside Tokyo. And the to replace the eight ball world championships in Puerto Rico. I'm so excited about this because when it was in Austria this year, it was a fantastic event. Philippines were the world championships, uh, world champions. They beat Great Britain in the final. And that is the world teams championships. And it is along the same lines, the same rules as the pro, pro billiard series, two races to four, but it's not, it's, it's, uh, Ladies singles, men's singles, and then a mixed scotch doubles. And then if we're level, then we go, we still go to a uh, a captain's choice. And then if we're still level after that, we go to the shootout. So it's it's really is a fantastic tournament. And there's going to be many, many more teams in it this year. And that is going to be a real, a great event on the calendar. For, for yeah, that's on. a great event. Let me ask you a question from 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 your job point of view. When you're in the booth and you're broadcasting and you're covering these matches, what's the hardest part about being a pool commentator? There is nothing hard about being a pool commentator. I think if you love the game, it's not work. It's just talking. You mentioned in part one about I'm normally sat next to an expert, which I, I am. I mean, we were so lucky this year to get Jim White on board. Jim White is one of my favourite, my all-time favourite snooker commentators and pool commentators. Fantastic guy. First, first time I met him was in Puerto Rico. We just hit it off straight away. We get each other. I'm actually going to visit him at his pool room in Canada um, in between Atlantic after Atlantic City and before um, Vegas. So I'm going to go up to Jim's Corner Bank's pool room. He's got snooker tables there. He's got pool tables. And I'm going to go and spend a couple of weeks with Jim at Corner Bank's there in Toronto. And I'm also going to go to the Hidden Spot in Calgary. And I'm going to go and do a little bit of coaching at um, Joanne Ashton's place, uh, the Hidden nice Spot. Up, nice. Room. that's a very nice pool room oh it's a beautiful room i was there actually there, this year as well so there is a level two billiards follower that plays at the hidden spot um i'll have to hook you up with him 
and um, maybe you'll play some sets with him. Yeah, good. What, what uh, how emotional do you get personally? Because obviously you're, you have favorites, right? But there are mm. people that, uh, on a broadcast, uh, when you're broadcasting, you obviously have to be somewhat neutral, but you're still human, right? So you still have emotional attachments. I know, you know, when I see Skylar play or Fedora or whoever, and they lose, I'm not happy about it. Is that is it hard to separate that when you're when you're broadcasting? I actually hate to see anyone lose because in the commentary booth, you go through these all these emotions because I've been a player as well. You know, I know how they feel. And that so much effort goes in and, you know, we're seeing things in the booth that you're not seeing on on the screen, maybe like the players reactions off camera. I mean, we do try and get as much of that now as, as possible as well. But it, it you really do live their emotion. And I honestly, I would love every single match to go hill hill and I'd love both of them to win it. But <laughs> Of course, it, reality, right? But I have got favourites. Everyone knows who my favourites are. I love it when Kelly plays. I love it when Jason Shaw plays because, you know, I'm good friends with Jason as well, I like to think. And we've I've spent time with him at his house and we've been fishing together. We've done some nice stuff together. I spent time with his wife and his kids. So there's some emotional attachment there. But at the end of the day, Jay, I just want to see really good Paul played. Um, and I... I think of myself when I'm in the booth, I'm no expert as it's plain to see, but I've got a passion and I'm the kind of guy that wants to commentate for the zero Fargo up to 400, let's say. And then the pros take it from there, from the 400s to the 800 pros. So I'm, I, I like to think that I go across the spectrum of all fans Whereas the, the guy next to me in the booth will be the one that's really talking to the to the higher Fargo rated, you know, good quality players. Whereas I'm just there to play devil's advocate and ask some stupid questions and, you know, tr try and try and break it down. If 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 he's saying, oh, you know, he's going to play inside English here. Well, you know, what is that? What what, what do you mean by that, Tony? Well, he's going to strike, you know, he's going to strike high and left on the cue ball or, or right, whichever it might be, you know. So I, I I can remember watching Paul when I was new to it and thinking, what are they on about? Long rail, short rail. They're all the same length. What are they on about long rail, short rail? And what what do they mean in, in you know, inside English and outside English? And, and what what is all that? So I want to try and bring the spectator that's new to the sport, get them involved in it and get them understanding it from from the beginning and and something else I try to do which I think is very important in being a commentator I don't I'm not one of these people who believes that trying to you know call in all these different shots when they're down on the shot just to try and make yourself look good I don't agree with that I think you should be silent when the player is down on the shot and I would much rather describe what they did after the shot and why they did it than try and, you know, sometimes I'm getting confused and and they're pointing at the screen and going, look, well, I think he's going to go there and there and there and then come around down there. You know, the viewer at home isn't seeing our screen. They don't know what they're what what he's talking about. So I like that's to actually, keep it simple. That's actually a, a big pet peeve of mine from some, some commentators. Uh, you know, they, they analyze every shot. This is what he should do. This is what he's going to do. And, and typically they're wrong, right? Uh, and if you watch professional baseball or professional football or professional whatever, hockey, uh, I guess over where you're from, football and soccer and same thing, the commentators don't spend time telling you what's about to happen. And, and to me, I call that lazy. That's that's a commentator that did not prepare, that did not speak to the players ahead of time. I know you do that, and you and you find out about things be, you know, about them or what they're playing or you know what equipment they're using or what mood they're in or if they're sick or you know they had a hard time sleeping or the air conditioner was broken in the room or or whatever. Yeah, you give us give us those angles and and these 
many of these commentators, they just drone on and on and on about, uh, um, I, 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 this is what I would do, or this, you know, uh, it drives me absolutely insane. And, and typically the, in those cases, I can't watch um, because I want the sound. I want to hear the balls hitting because that's, a, I want to hear that part, right? I don't want to hear what you think the, the player should do because usually it's a, it's a guy I, I've never even heard of. He, maybe he's a good pool, pool player, but I don't know. Let me not go on and on about that. Let me ask you this question. You, you, you have done uh, many of junior event and, and no junior players. Who, who in 2023 should we be looking at from a junior's perspective, from either a male or a female or both or whatever, any, any juniors that you see that, wow, you just say, wow, this, this kid's going to be, this kid's going to be a heavy stick when he, when he gets to the pro level. There's, there's uh, several I'd like to mention. I mean, there's a, a young girl from um, Austria called Lena Primus, who, Really impresses me when I've seen her play. Um, she's got a way to go yet. I wouldn't say she's one of the top juniors at the moment, but she she is going to be. She's got the perfect work ethic. She she trains also with uh, Jasmine at Jasmine's Academy, and uh, so she's in good company there with with J uh, Jasmine and Albin. Of course, she's from Klagenfurt. Uh, she loves the game, so she's a great one to look out for from Europe from Europe. Uh, as far as America's concerned, I mean, you know, somebody that really has impressed me on and off the table this year is everyone's talking about the young 20, young 20, the young 12 year old, uh, the road runner, Savannah Easton, you know, she, she's super good. I mean, really is. And she's got such a great work ethic at 12 years old. You know, when you think Kelly Fisher didn't even start playing till she was 12. You know, she didn't pick up a cue till she was 12. Look what Savannah Easton's already achieved. I think she's, yeah. you know, she's, 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 she's finished. She played some really good tournaments. She's beat some big names this year. On the guy's side, I'm super impressed with him. I got to interview him actually a couple of weeks back. Joey Tate, really, really huge fan of his. Landon Hollingsworth, I'm a great fan of his also. Uh, Payne McBride, another great kid coming through. You've got Skylar Hess. Um, who else is there? You've got uh, Kennedy Mayman, you've got little uh, the Pink Dagger, Sophia Mast. You've got so much. I think you've got more talent coming through the juniors now than you've got in the adults. You know, when you, yeah. you know, when you go level for level. Hopefully, we'll win a Moscone again because it doesn't look good for us currently. Why? Why I mentioned the word Moscone? I didn't want to make this. I didn't want to. I don't want to get into Moscone too much, but I do have one question for you. If you were the coach of Team USA in 2022, would you have put Earl Strickland on your team? And if not, who would you have put as the Earl, the, the player in the Earl spot? I personally, I wanted the year before, I wanted to see Earl play. But just because I've never seen him play live and I'd love, I wanted to see him play at Moscone. The only reason I was hoping he was going to play this time was because we never got to see him last time, but I think it was a huge mistake to play him. I think he's got, he hasn't got the right head for it. We all know he's a little bit uh, fiery, shall we say. And going back to the international that we, at, we were at, I don't know whether you remember this, but Earl was playing on the match table in the, on the Bigfoot table and he, or maybe it was in the nine, the nine ball afterwards on the on the nine for anyway. He went really crazy and moaned at a woman for opening a, a candy wrapper in the audience while he was down on the shot. And he'd just been chosen for the Moscone last year. And I was thinking, this guy, he's not going to hack it in, you know, with the crowds the way they are now. I mean, I, I I'm not a an aficionado on Moscone on past Moscone cuts, but I think the crowds are getting more and more crazy and crazy. Um, and I I thought it was a bad pick for them. I thought they could have given him, uh, they could have given a, a different player a chance. I you think it was an emotional pick. It was about selling tickets more or creating 
hype more. I mean, there has to be a better pick, right? Than than Earl. Was it more of a? Do you think from from a promoter point of view, it was more of a business decision than a uh, than a team strategy position? What 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 do you? What's your opinion on that? I don't. I don't think Jeremy Jones would have picked him. I, I really don't think it was his pick. But I'm not talking as an expert on how they choose players or wild cards or how they do it. Um, but I certainly, you could predict what was going to happen with him. Whereas if you put somebody, you know, even even a, a, a Nick Delion or a Chris Reinhold or. Uh, who was the other one that they were all? Uh, um, Greg? Shane Walford or even Greg Hogue, you know? I think you had so many options to try somebody new because you need to start building for the future. You know, look, we all know Oscar's a great player, but Oscar is a money player. He's a long race player. He's not a short race to five player. I thought he looked out of place as well, if I'm honest. I think... He's got he's good enough, but not in that particular format. So I right. think I think you could have chosen two other players, but then but then you couldn't because Oscar got in there on merit anyway. So I can't that's a bit of a stupid thing to say, really. But going forward, I think I think you need to change the way the teams are picked. If you've got a captain, I think the captain should choose who he wants regardless of rankings, to be honest, making these players travel all over the world, you know, chasing points for one shot at winning 30 grand in a Moscone. I think they should be going to other tournaments where they've got a chance of picking up some money because they're not, you know, the, the players that I've just mentioned, they're not going to go winning the US Open or the, uh, you know, or the big, the, the world ball, the world nine ball championship or something like that. They're not in that class. And I think you need, if, if you're a captain, then you need to have control of the reins and you need to pick who you believe will be, do the best for your country. Yeah. Good, good, good point. Let's wrap it up. I have one more thing I want to ask you. Um, you could, you you are given special powers and you could change one thing about the sport to make it better. I'm not saying to make it mainstream, but just one thing that you could do to make the, that you think would uh, positively affect uh, the sport. What, what would you do? I think you should have a tablecloth the same color in all the tournaments. It should be blue, in my opinion. Nothing against gray, but I don't like it. It should be blue. You should have the same color balls, no matter what. If you're playing in WPA uh, events, you know, if they're world ranking events and going towards ranking points, then you can't have different color balls. You can't have different color cloth. You need a standardized pocket size. Um, you need a shot clock. You need to either decide whether you're racking with a triangle or whether you're going to rack with a template. And it has to stay the same in all those world tournaments. I love, I know it's not Matram that have done it because it was it's it's years old, but I love the break box. I love what that's done for the game. I think it's made it more interesting. They're not making the wing ball all the time. They're trying to make the one in the side. They, you can't predict the outcome. You're getting clusters. So we, we as fans, okay, the players may not be fans of it, but as for viewers, and we're the ones that are going to pay the, the prize money. We're the ones that are going to buy the product that the sponsors are trying to sell us, right? Pros don't pay for anything. They want everything for nothing. Right? But Which is right. It's, it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's right because they've earned that. They've earned that right. But for fans to get more fans involved in the sport, we don't want to watch somebody break, make the wing ball and run the table every single time, especially when it's winner breaks. I think winner break should go. I think it should be alternate break. The same as most sports, you know, you get the chance to, to reply. People like Jason Shaw traveling from America 
I'm only using this as an example because it happened last year, this year, sorry, where he travels from America. Uh, Fortunski travels from Poland. They go there. Jason loses the lag and loses 7 nil or 8 nil or, or whatever it is. Doesn't get a shot. Right. That, as, a, as a pro, okay, they don't like the break box maybe so much because it's a little bit of a, a lottery. But I think... Given the two alternatives, I think alternate break with a template, with a break box and a shot clock. There must be a shot clock. Players, it's not doing them any good either because they're second guessing themselves. I've seen some horrendous racks, you know, where they're not on a shot clock. Look, make the shot clock a minute. Change it from 30 seconds and to a minute and give them one 30 second extension per rack, especially in eight ball. 30 seconds isn't long enough, in my opinion, to play eight ball. A lot of players were coming up to me and saying, you know, there's just not enough time to think. Eight ball is a completely different animal as well. So I think change it to a minute shot clock. OK, a minute's nothing anyway. Some of the huge arenas now, it takes you 10 seconds to get from your chair to the to the table. So now you're down to 20 seconds. So alternate break, template rack, three point rule, break box, four inch pockets, four inch pockets, not four and a quarter, four inch pockets. Let's let's let the best player win. Let's not have too much slop. Right. Um. Alternate break, same color balls, shot clock. Consistency. Mark, shout out your uh, Mark, shout out your sponsors. Let us know who's supporting you so that so whether we can support them. Yeah, big thanks to Town, who have just the one of my newest sponsors. Actually, they love what I'm doing on social media, and I believe in the product. I'm not just going to go with a product because they give me product or whatever. I only support products that I believe in. Town is by far the best chalk there is. I believe that. I've used it. I've never used anything else. Soundbox, who you see up over my shoulder there, they're recording. My, fr my friend's just opened a recording studio. He's actually a rap artist, a music producer, and a songwriter, music writer. Uh, he is going to help me with all my videos that I do from now on. He's going to do all my editing for free and jam up I've just uh, done a, a nice deal with Jam Up where I'm going to be bringing out my own range of clothing. We're going to launch it in Las Vegas in February. And I'm also having a two piece queue range coming out where you can have a birthday wrap printed on the back of your shirt. I will also give a video of the birthday wrap and it'll have a little picture of me on the front of it as well. So we, there's some good stuff happening for me. Good stuff happening for Paul. It's a great time to be involved with Paul. And I cannot yeah, wait for 2020. Great owner, a great owner, Jam Up. I remember when they started. Uh, good guy. Met him in person. 